Over these past few months, I have made a lot of videos talking about suggestions for a new enlisted campaign. However, time and time again, I am getting requests from people who want me to talk about a specific campaign, for example, like the Battle of the Bulge. Most of these examples are great. A few even have given me some ideas to do new campaign videos, such as a French campaign or a Polish campaign. However, sometimes me and other, other people come with ideas for a very bad campaign idea, and therefore these videos are not made. However, today I'm going to be making such a video, and I'm just going to be rating these worst campaign suggestions in my mind, and in the mind of some other people. Some of these campaigns have a similar problem, such as most reused factions, weapons, and most of them have bad maps or ideas design. But that's it, without further ado, let's get started with this video. This video has been possible for friends at Discord, meaning that if you haven't liked, subscribed, or joined the Discord, I highly suggest that you like, subscribe, or join the Discord. But that's it, let's get started with the top 10 worst campaign suggestions. The first one that we have up is the Battle of El Alamein. The Battle of El Alamein, or the Second Battle of El Alamein, was a battle of the Second World War that took place near the Egyptian River Halt of El Alamein, of which the Allies were victorious. With that little intro and history out of the way, the first campaign of El Alamein is obviously a lot of good stuff, like the British Commonwealth and their allies being edited, most notably India, the Anzacs, and South African troops. While on the other hand, we have the Germans and their Italian allies. Obviously, this is going to be a repeat of Tunisia. And speaking of repeats, here are the problems. The first one that we have are similar weapons, such as the MP40, the Beretta M1, and the Sten. Hopefully, if enlisted use El Alamein, they should take away semi-automatics, and which is going to help a lot. Other issues for El Alamein includes your ability to get bombed, and unlike Tunisia, El Alamein is basically flat. <laughs> Overall, the idea of El Alamein is not bad considering the fact that it's considered a turning point in this war, but in practice, El Alamein is just going to be a repeat of Tunisia, even if they add in the British Empire and their Commonwealth. In number 4, in terms of the 4th worst campaign in Enlisted, we have the Warsaw Uprising. The Warsaw Uprising was a major World War II operation led by the Polish underground resistance to liberate Warsaw from the German occupation, which occurred in summer of 1944. It was led by the Polish resistance, the Polish Home Army, and the resistance was time to condense with the retreat of the German forces from Poland and head of the Soviet advance. At first, when we think of this campaign uprising or battle, I honestly think it's a good idea, because Warsaw is fairly similar to Berlin with close quarters combat, and Polish forces are going to be added and listed. However, as we think more about the story of an underdog defeating an evil empire, we start to realize that the campaign is going to be a bad idea. For one, the Poles don't have weapons of their own, meaning that they're going to be using mostly captured German weapons, or even stuff given by the Allied powers, covertly. And when I mean covertly, I'm basically meaning the British Sten. Hence, all of the weapons that we're going to be giving are going to be the German MP40 and underground weapons such as the Sten. Although this weapon issue is present, the bigger issue is the planes and the tanks, of which Poland does not have any. Yes, the Poles were able to steal some Panthers and even Panzers, but they didn't have much in terms of the air. As a matter of fact, in terms of overall air support, you can't even give the Polish air support because the Soviets didn't give the Polish any air support, and when Allied troops, especially the United States and the UK, attempted to give the Polish air support, the Soviets basically denied them their bases, so basically they're letting them out to die. Needless to say, without these weapons and vehicles, the Polish campaign is going to be doomed to fail. Although it's already a very good campaign suggestion, it is straight outright going to doom to fail. Like. I really hope that this campaign is going to be a good campaign, sadly it's not, and sadly it's just going to make it number 4 on our list. Not because the campaign idea is bad, but the way that it's going to be implemented is going to be bad. In number 3, we have Operation Dragoon. Operation Dragoon, or o Operation Antville, was the code name for landing operations for the Allied in southern France on 15th of August 1944. This operation was planned to be executed in conjunction with Operation Overlord, but the lack of resources led to a cancellation of the second landing. By July of 1944, the landing was reconsidered and clogged up ports in Normandy did not have the facility to adequately supply Allied forces. Consequently, the French High Command pushed a relative operation 
that could basically include a large number of French troops. As a result, the operation was approved in July to be executed in August of 1944. Needless to say, what makes Operation Dragoon on this list is its similarity to Normandy. Dragoon is basically another Normandy except from southern France and not in northern France. Although Normandy is already bad enough, Dragoon can actually be quite worse. Most notably because of the French resistance might not even get added considering the fact that Normandy didn't even add the British or the Canadians and just added the Americans. For starters, Dragoon was partly only possible with the French resistance, so not adding the French is like a big F you. And Enlisted might not be even putting them in the game, so that's just gonna put the entire thing to shame. Next, we have the maps, and when we think of Normandy, um, those maps are bad, but Dragoon's maps can be potentially even worse. To make the situation worse, it could be a skewed progression system. And the reason why I say it's gonna be a skewed progression system, because at Dragoon, the Germans technically had better equipment, if not better defensive positions, and the reason why is that um, the Germans were actually prepared and instead of like Normandy, in which, let's be honest, uh, the Germans were not really prepared. But in terms of everything else, um, our operation in southern France could be actually pretty good. I personally just don't think we should be adding another Normandy-like similar campaign. I don't think it's a great idea, and considering the fact that if Dragoon is added and the French are not added, that's just gonna be the biggest catastrophe that we're ever gonna have. But that said, this is the third worst that we can get, and let's move on to the second worst. In the second worst, we have the Battle of the Bulge, and the Battle of the Bulge was basically known as the Ardennes Offensive, and it was the, basically the last major German offensive on the Western Front during World War II, and this operation was carried out on the 16th of December 1944 to the 25th of January 1944, towards the end of the war in Europe. Obviously, what makes this campaign such a bad idea is that it's a combination of Axis bias, cast bombing, exactly the same progression, buildings that you can shoot through, and probably even more, more importantly, the exact same factions which are going to be the United States and Germany. For starters, there is incredible Axis bias. Imagine the FG-42, the SCG, and other late war equipment, all used by the Axis. All of these already have to be dealt with. You're using the M1A1 Thompson or the M2 Carbine. Now, in terms of vehicles, there is once again Axis bias and that is Panthers, Yak Panzers, Tigers, King Tigers. Unlike at Berlin, the Bulge was basically Germany's last offensive, and during this occasion, Germany was basically throwing its best reserves at the Allies, to be exact, the Americans. So in reality, the equipment of the Battle of the Bulge should be better in quality and quantity than what the Axis have in Berlin. Next, we have cast bombing, and historically this doesn't really play a big role until the end of the battle, but cast bombing, we literally have to deal with that considering the fact that both sides are using late war equipment. The Americans have a lot more cast bombers, especially with those rockets. So imagine Normandy, but this time it's flat terrain. And to make the situation worse, we have wooden buildings. Yes, the exact same Moscow type wooden buildings that you can basically shoot through in the Battle of the Bulge. So this is basically a combination of bad. Honestly, a lot of people are hyped up for this campaign because like we have the Americans in winter uniform in the Battle of the Bulge. I am honestly not looking forward to this campaign if Enlisted implements this at all. I really don't want to see that. I really don't want to see this campaign. Heck, the factions are even going to be the same, so why bother? Honestly, just just play just play Berlin because it's going to be a better experience. Needless to say, the Battle of the Bulge is hell. If it's going to be implemented in Enlisted, it's going to be even more hell. And basically, think of Stalingrad, but five times worse. And that is the Battle of the Bulge. Next, let's move on to the worst campaign that Enlisted could ever implement. And number one on the worst campaigns that Enlisted could ever implement is one that you probably already guessed it. It's a campaign on the Eastern Front, and at this point, the only worst campaign that the Eastern Front can ever offer is probably the Battle of Kursk. The Battle of Kursk was a major World War II Eastern Front engagement against the Germans and the Russians near Kursk in the southwestern USSR during the late summer of 1943, and it basically became the largest tank battle in history. As of this point, if you haven't realized by now, Kursk is going to be the worst. Any Eastern Front battle at this point is going to be the worst campaign experience because we already have three. One late war, one middle war, and one early war. Needless to say, another Eastern Front campaign is not needed, mainly because we already have three to be exact, adding more will turn people away. And obviously there are some campaigns that are worse than others when it comes to the Eastern Front. 
I've just picked the worst, and the worst, in my opinion, is Kursk. Besides the fact that the Germans and the Soviets are again at the gates, um, we also have the same equipment, which is basically going to make this campaign the worst experience of all time, considering that nothing is new. But worse is still to come, considering that we have 100% cast bombing, and once this time, both sides have extremely deadly cast bombers because the Battle of Kursk was all about cast bombing tanks and just throwing troops at each other. Literally, that is my best definition of it. For once, there are basically no cover considering that the Battle of Kursk has no cover except for the trenches that the Russians dug. On the open map, there will be basically no buildings except for some that were basically destroyed within seconds of the battle. And the ground is basically flat, so means which means tanks, snipers, and planes will have a heyday. I also forgot to mention the fact that there are no trees. And well, at least there were not enough trees, considering the fact that the Russians chopped all of them down and used them to build entrenchments. And the next issue is basically there is Soviet bias at Kursk because the Soviets have the PBS and the PBS H41, and all they have to do is to go to SMGs, and the Germans don't even have that at this point. And now we have the thing of open field, which is going to make the Soviet experience even better, and the Germans basically have to rely on their tanks, and for once, the Germans should have better tanks, considering we have Panthers, Tigers, well, the Soviets have the T-34-76. Needless to say, Kursk is the lowest in this video for a reason. I honestly would not want to play Kursk. Like, all the issues that I have just talked about are basically the non not even the tip of the iceberg, and I really don't want to be playing Kursk, I really don't want to get the experience of Kursk. Honestly, it's just gonna be a sniper duel, a long range tank duel, and a cast bombing heyday. So please, don't make me play Kursk. I don't really want to play it. There are some good examples of Soviet Eastern Front experiences. One is Leningrad, and that is because you can add the finish in, but there is only one massive problem considering the fact that there's also another campaign called Moscow that is just going to be basically looking exactly the same as Leningrad, except for in Moscow and not in Leningrad. But that said, this is all it for the top 5 worst ideas for a campaign suggestion. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join the Discord, but that's it for today guys, I'll see you in the next one. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.